Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Friday afternoon at the Fun House. We're a little bit late today. We had the uh, the holiday, the Fourth of July holiday yesterday. This morning's is a little crazy, so uh, we're, we're we're making sure to bring you an episode here on Friday, just a little bit later than normal. Of course, in the co-captain's chair, as always, Mr. Martin Popoff. Yes, morning, morning, sir. Did Ray, you survive the? Uh, it is a little late. I Hopefully the brain still works at this hour, but uh, this ungodly late hour, but we'll see. <laughs> I know, I know, I hear you. Yeah, yeah we, I think we've survived the uh, all the explosions and fireworks and everything here, so we're, we're doing yeah. okay. Yeah. So, uh, of course, today's topic is like an extension of what we did last week. So last week we talked a little bit about these, uh, the kind of the pillars of the new wave of British heavy metal movement and how they kind of spearheaded and got through the whole hair metal kind of scene right today we're going to actually take a look at these four bands once again so we're talking about motorhead iron maiden saxon and def leppard and we're going to look at all their albums from 77 to 83 which is basically the years of the new wave of british heavy metal and we're going to throw them up in the air and we're going to rank them all because that's what we martin and i like doing these really really hard tasks to uh entertain all you folks here so uh yeah we know a lot of great albums here so somehow we're going to rank them what do we have here martin 18 is that what we got Something? i think it's 18 yep that's 18, what i've got yeah. 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 So yeah. I don't know if you want to add anything before we go. Maybe we should clarify a little bit because so many people were like, but but Motorhead doesn't belong here and Def Leppard were never metal. I'm like, oh, here we go again. I don't know if you want to clarify any of that at all. for Exactly. Everybody. I thought I thought for sure we're going to get those complaints again, but I'll I'll just give my rant about Motorhead one more time on on uh, on why they belong in this whole thing. So we've got we've got a bit of a false start of an album in 77. Um, they they basically they form in 75. So, you know, Priest formed in like 69. They had a first album in 74. They had an album in 76, 77, 78, 79, a uh, live album, right? They've been around a lot. So, so I, I never bought that Priest one. But Motorhead, they basically, they sign with Bronze. They they essentially make what I think are the, the two albums pretty much that kick off the new wave of British heavy metal. So I want to give them that it's a little early um but they looked apart the they got colored vinyl they got you know picture sleeves they're playing with all those same bands they got a nifty logo the the they've got illustrated album cover art i mean that to me they're just absolutely uh belong and and i think uh def leopard uh had they not done even like let's start with pyromania but had they not done pyromania forward i mean everybody would have said this is the greatest new wave of british heavy metal band of all time right um they, they you know people would have said those two albums are absolute classics they're the best the genre ever gave us right but it's just the history veers in another direction um and that's why people complain i think so yeah and, and let's you. let's also like for clarify so uh, there's a lot of other bands that are considered classic new wave of british heavy metal bands when you really listen to their music it's maybe not quite metal so and along with you know def leppard you've got uh, praying mantis you've got demon would you really call any of their albums really metal right. like yeah. some others maybe yeah. not but it's like there's so some are more in the hard rock area but still they've always been considered part of this movement early on and you're absolutely yeah. right if, if, if the band had split up after high and dry and never released another album these two those first two records we looked at as genre classics they, they still are i think uh yeah. but even more so i think because of all the kind of the pop stuff they did afterwards never really wouldn't have happened right yeah and, and you know we we argued for these bands being the big four as well and i still think they're the big four because what happens is um these are bands that did carry on hence the last episode but people you know i i saw the comments and people rightly said you know, if, if you were going to try to even add one more into the big four, just like we, we tinker with the big four of thrash, you know, and one one big sort of candidate would be, uh, say, Tigers of Pentang. Right. So you want to find a band that had, you know, some success and were good and had four albums out, you know, between 79 and 84, say, kind of thing. And there aren't even a lot of those. And then most of them, uh, like like we say, most of them evaporate into the wilderness they go away they go back to their day jobs or they don't have any success or whatever um so there's really really nothing that that uh that fits uh you know th this is there's these four and then there's the big drop right right exactly yeah yeah so yeah all right so uh so yeah i'll uh how about i kick off with my first six so we mashed all of these together right yep 
And um, yeah, I don't have physicals of all these, but I'll pop them up as I do. So I evidently no longer have a Saxon Saxon, which I bought as a new release. No, I actually didn't buy as a new release. I'm lying. Uh, I bought that after Wheels of Steel. There you go. Great, great new wave of British heavy metal album cover and back oh, cover. Yeah. Um, but I'm rating it last, uh, May 79. So uh, this is before they were cognizant that any, you know, Motorhead was uh, on the ball already. They knew something. They, they, they had an exciting new idea. Saxon was still kind of living off of their, you know, two or three or four, whatever it is, years as son of a bitch and just kind of moving on. They're kind of a 70s band still, right? And that's sort of a 70s album. It's just not super impressive. It's, it's sort of like the first uh, couple of uh, Kicks at the Cat uh, by uh, Samson. Uh, sort of thing right um so that's my my uh 18 my 17 is motorhead motorhead and uh i did get this as a new release and uh it was so funny i just remember thinking uh this is the first album that i ever real uh that i ever thought are these guys trying to record badly on purpose because they want <laughs> a, an incredibly dirty sound right there's yep. there's bands that wanted a dirty sound or a raucous or a live sound before, but this is the first thing that that like it's this on route to Venom, basically, right? Um, so yeah, I I thought I was I I was it was almost scary, like like it's like are these guys trying to like kill the music business with this record or something? Um, because it's it's pretty incendiary, right? Um, but it's just not particularly all that great. Um, you know, we thought we thought the songs Motorhead and Vibrator were a little bit kind of poppy and happy sounding in terms of the the riff um and then you've got uh train kept a rolling on here which which we didn't you know, we didn't want kind of thing we keep us on the road the watcher the rest of it's all pretty cool white line fever is also a little poppy and punky so it's it's uh you know had this had a, co a completely different look of the band and name and all that you could almost see this come out as a punk album and you could be convinced it was uh it was a bit of a punk album right um and then uh, I don't have a physical anymore of Saxon Strong Arm of the Law. So I'm going with that next. Um, you know, Saxon at this uh, at this juncture. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, they, they got a second album out in 1980. I think it's a little bit rushed. It's a little bit not greatly recorded. It doesn't have a lot of bass to it. It's kind of dirty and distorted. And the songs are sort of simple. Uh, this is the, you know, the famous sort of era that I, I, I kind of describe them as a, as their kiss albums and this is the most kiss album uh, of all of them uh, and then i'm going with uh where is it here um wheels of steel uh so this is the first one i got as a new release um and i was super excited about it i mean it looked like such a cool metal album it's uh kind of like iron maiden it's it's like they're giving you that heavy metal look um you know literally like really trying to trying to prove that uh, something new is happening here. And, and it's had all sorts of great songs, Wheels of Steel, like, you know, heavy, gritty, new wave of British heavy metal, ACDC, Motorcycle Man, Fast, Freeway Mad, Fast, Machine Gun, Fast. Um, see the light shine and stand up and be counted a little, little bit leaning into that uh, strong arm of the law air, 747 Strangers in the Night, big, melodic, uh, kind of epic, but yeah, good album, but I still feel like uh, this reminds me a little bit of Quiet Riot Metal Health, where you can go, ah, there's a few 70s moves still happening uh, in the band at this point. Um, and then I go with uh, Denim and Leather. This is the uh, the Kiss album by Saxon that tries harder. Um, so the point is, the songs are still pretty simple, um, but the production is really, really clean and good. It's got good bottom end, good high end. Um, you instantly notice it with the palm muting on Princess of the Night. Uh, you know, every, everything's really, really tight on here. Uh, it's got the big, uh, you know, classic denim and leather, which I don't even think is that great. Fire in the Sky is pretty good on here. And the bands played on is the other big classic on here. But yeah, the rest, you know, Never Surrender, Out of Control, Rough and Ready, that kind of thing um, kind of fits in with Strong Arm of the Lost. So it's not a massive improvement in 1981. Uh, and then we've got uh, Motorhead uh, Bomber. And, uh, you know, I typically think Bomber and Overkill are about, about as good as each other. I like it a lot. I've never had any problem with it. Um, I think it's got a lot of... Poison is the best song on it. It's most purely heavy metal on it. But it's got, uh, you know, it's got that typical, um, you know, racy stun gun based production from Motorhead, but still pretty, pretty good, uh, lively. Um, yeah, Dead Men, uh, Tell No Tales. Uh, Stone Dead Forever is good on here as well. All the aces, basically, yeah, kind kind of like Overkill. Um, and that is my first six. Cool. Okay. 
All right, we're totally in line with the bottom two here. Saxon from 79 is my number 18. Yeah. I, I never reach for this album at all. I think it's it's okay for what it is, but I think compared to everything else that comes after, I think it pales in comparison. It still sounds very much like a 70s band. They still don't really have their sound down yet. Uh, a couple good tracks, but for the most part, it's not overly memorable. Uh, and yet the cover totally looks like something that would come out of this period. That's my number 18, my number 17. Also, I'm going to go with uh, Motorhead, debut yeah. from 77. Very much like a punk album, I think, uh, which I think a lot of these new wave of British heavy metal bands early on had lots of punk influences here. Uh, you know, the title track Motorhead is great. Vibrator is good. I, I always like White Line Fever. But you're right. It's it's very kind of raw produced. And like it's like almost like they went out of their way to do this, I think. And amazing with both Saxon and Motorhead, how with their second albums going forward, they just improved so much right off the bat. Uh, and even though there was a couple of years in between the Motorheads and not as much time in between the Saxons, I think by the time Overkill and Bomber came around, it's almost like it's night and day right there. Uh, number 16. So from here on in, I like everything quite a bit here. And these can kind of change and whatnot. I almost feel bad putting this where it is, but I just think I enjoy the other albums more. I'm going to put Pyromania at number 16. Uh, I mean, it's hard to argue that this is a really great album. Uh, it's there's just so many great songs on here. I think for me, I just heard this album so many times in my life that I don't really reach for it much anymore. Um, Coming Under Fire is my favorite song on the album. You know, you got all these hits on here that we've all heard a million times. But I think Coming Under Fire is terrific. That could have been on High and Dry, I think. Uh, you know, Stage Fright is great. Too Late for Love. Loads of, loads of um, hits on here. I think we all know it really, really well. It's got great production. I just, I don't know. These days, I don't listen to this or reach for this all that much, but that's my number 16. Next up, I'm going to go with Iron Fist, which I think is a really solid Motorhead record. And I think uh, some people, most people kind of shit on it as the the weakest out of all of the Fast Eddie Clark era. Probably correct there, but I still think it's pretty damn strong. I think a title track is a great, great song. Uh, I'm the doctor is great. Go to hell is great. It's just raw and in your face. The production's really, really gritty. You know, it's not as good as the couple that came before it. That's for sure. But it's, I don't think it's a bad album at all. It maybe it's just showing a band that the lineup is showing, showing his cracks at this point in time, but I definitely think it's still lots of fun. I dig it. That is my number 15, number yep. 14. I'm going to go with on through the night. Loaded with anthems. I like the production. Tom Allen works here. Uh, you know, Rock Brigade is a terrific song. Hello America is great. Um, Wasted is great. Rock Soft. Just a good, young, hungry band. Good, hard rock album. Whether it's metal or not, I think it uh, doesn't really matter at this point. Great cover. I always love the cover art. A lot of fun. I remember when it first came out, we were all into it. Really great stuff there. Uh, number 13, I'm going to go with Wheels of Steel. 1980 meat and potatoes right you, you mentioned uh it sounds like this is their kind of like early kiss period there's like no frills basic riffs and it's all about anthems and just you know motorcycle man 747 the title track um what else is on here machine gun Susie hold on these are just great simple memorable metal songs and i think that's that's what I like about the early part of Saxon. I think once they got to like power and the glory and onward, they started to inject a little bit more musicality, but I, I just, I love the anthemic nature of these early albums. I think they're really good. They're basic, they're fun. And that's, that's what this music is all about. So that's my number 13. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. My last one, right? Okay. Back to you. Yep. yep. Okay. My number 12 is uh pyromania. I really like this album. I mean, I, I was okay with it when it came out and then it went down and then it went up. And now I'm actually really quite okay with it. I mean, photograph is really the only song I don't like on it. I think fooling is really cool. Um, Ooh, I've often said weird. that there's a lot of sort of, um, and I love coming under fire as well. Stage fright, die hard. That, wow. There's a lot of good heavy stuff on here. And I've often argued that it, it sounds kind of Swedish. It, it sounds like, sounds like, you know, Geronimo riffs and Swedish frost core and, and like, like early Europe, like like the second Europe album. Right? Exactly, yeah. 
like like you think of the the chorus to Foolin', right? I mean, there, there's there's some dark chord changes all through this album, right? And the production's good. It's not egregious yet. It's not it's not moving into where it doesn't sound. I mean, it just sounds super professional, right? So yeah, that's a, that's a great album. I have no problem with uh, with Pyromania. Um, next, I've got uh, Motorhead Overkill. And to me, basically, um, yeah, I, I loved, you know, I bought this as a new release. I, I just freaked out when I saw that album cover, you know, based on because all we knew is the black and white one. Right. But uh, yeah, it's got your uh, your famous uh, uh, double bass all the way through overkill song. Um, I think the best song on, on it is uh, I'll Be Your Sister. Um, because yeah, anything with these albums where it got a little more complicated and riffy, that's uh, that's what I like the most uh, on these as well. Uh, Metropolis for a good grinding sort of heavy one on here. Stay Clean was cool, nice and nice and uh, you know fast. Um, but yeah, good album. Um, and uh, yeah, this was uh, I I remember thinking uh, at the time this was one of the heaviest albums I'd ever heard of as of nineteen seventy nine. At the time, yeah, no, for sure. no ballads. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, how how do you not call that band not a not a new wave of British heavy metal band, right? Yeah. I mean, look look at look at Lemmy there, right? I mean, it's just so uh, you know everything about it, right? Um, so next I've got uh, another perfect day. It's gone down a little bit in my estimation. I've been known throughout the years to actually call this my favorite Motorhead album. Um, and I think it does have really good production. It's got it's got a few clean things that Brian Robertson does on here. But it's essentially, um, it sounds just like typical Motorhead. Uh, but there just happen to be a, a few on here that I'm not uh, particularly crazy about. Shine being one of them. Back at the Funny Farm, actually not very much as well. Love Dancing on Your Grave, that's got a, a real... Um, you know, uh, clean uh, Brian Robertson lick in it. Um, yeah, marching off to war. I got mine was the other one that people sh it shocked people at the time. But uh, yeah, still still a very good album. I mean, we're in the middle of our list here. So um, number nine, I've got uh, on through the night. Um, you know, just super sort of capable, well put together, well produced by Tom Allen at Ringo's place and all that that story, right? Um, and uh, good riffs, good playing, good singing. They're already doing the harmonies and stuff. Um, and uh, as we were saying before, I mean, this this literally, for this to come out in 1980, um, this was pretty much the most professional of all the New Wave of British heavy metal albums. Yeah. Like, and, and instantly, you know, you could see the reason to ha start having that debate of not including them because they were just too good. I mean, it literally sounded like it was made in America. Yeah, right off the uh, bat, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like just a major label album from the States kind of thing. It was it was that good kind of thing. Um, and then we've got uh, Iron Fist. This has really gone up in my estimation over the years. Some of my favorite Motorhead songs are uh, are from here, like um, Don't Let Them Grind You Down, very catchy. America, very riffy. Um, uh, Iron Fist, not so great as an opener. That's see, that's that's the other thing. I think uh, you know people put this down because Eddie put it down at the time, but it doesn't have a very good opener. Um, and I think, um, and and there's a little bit, there's a little bit of a uh, how would you how would you call it? It's kind of a compressed, but but uh, but non motorheadish sort of conservative drum sound on it as well. But I think some of some of their greater greatest songs are are on here um loser is so good as well too what great chord changes in that so yeah this is this has definitely gone up in my opinion and i you know and if i was really pressed on the production of this album i'd almost say i prefer this to all the productions before it because really? it is a little more cleaned up it's a little drier i think for me anyway yeah yep yeah. yeah. and uh next i've got uh my last one in this batch is uh, iron maiden iron maiden um and yeah got this is a new release as the uk version and it's just it's got so much personality um but it is a little um you know it is a little it sounds like a band's first album the production is a little a little thin um you know they 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 think it's terrible like made made just like oh will malone blah 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 right um but uh, but the songs are incredible. They picked great songs on here. They're sequenced cool. They've got a little bit of mellowness, a little bit of like knees up kind of punkiness in, in well, Sanctuary, long story. I mean, that's not the, that wasn't on the UK version, right? Um, but uh, yeah, proggy, uh, dark, kind of creepy. 
um, kind of culty. You know, it, it sounds a little bit like, uh, and you could tell this band was going places because they had a lot of ideas, but they're kind of like laid down. Um, it, it, it almost feels like they could have used a few more takes uh, on, on a lot of this stuff. So uh, there you go. That's my 12 through seven. All right, my 12 is uh, Bomber by Motorhead. Yeah. Again, comes a, kind of like a package deal with Overkill, but I always like Overkill a bit more than this, but there's still some great stuff on there. Dead Men Tell No Tales is great. Poison, like he's mentioned, is awesome. I love Talking Head, Sharpshooter, good, grungy, just kind of dirty Motorhead, and a great, great album cover art. That's my number 12. My number 11 is Strong Arm of the Law. Again, just like with Wheels of Steel, just filled with these simple metallic anthems. I mean, I absolutely love Heavy Metal Thunder. Um, strong the title track is great. Of course, it's got Dallas on here, 20,000 feet. Just straightforward, simple, no-nonsense Saxon. Uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's just the, these albums are just so much fun. There's so many great songs from these. So that's my number 11. My number 10, which I just went and grabbed because I realized I didn't grab it, is uh, Another Perfect Day. Terrific album. I remember back in the day, so many people complaining about this album, you know, because they couldn't deal with the lineup change. Oh, they got a thin Lizzy guy in the motor hit. He's not going to fit. He's got short hair, blah, 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 blah. I think this, all these years later, this sounds just like any other Motorhead album from the era, other than the fact that maybe the guitar solos are a little bit more melodic. I mean, Die You Bastard is so good on here. I love Back at the Funny Farm. I think it's terrific. I love Lemmy's bass. It's just up front and dirty in the mix. Just so good. Um, Tales of Glory, man, just, ugh. Rocket. I mean, it's just a fun, heavy, gnarly album, and I totally dig it. And it's a shame the lineup only lasted for one for one record. But then we wouldn't have gotten the all the other ones that came after it. So, what are you going to do? All right, next up, I'm going to go with Denim and Leather by Saxon. Again, kind of part of the trio, right? So they have that that trio. I always like this one a little bit more. Princess of the Night is arguably my favorite Saxon song absolutely love it never surrender is a great anthem play it loud rough and ready and the band played on is terrific and i also love fire in the sky and i absolutely love the title track and they just totally looked the part right there so yeah, yeah. killer killer album love it and uh let's see what else next up i'm gonna go with uh where is it i'm gonna go with iron maiden yeah. debut everything you said uh, it's not quite as refined as the next album and everything going forward, but I still think it's really proggy and dark and kind of gothic and lurid. Uh, Prowl is great. Remember Tomorrow is killer. I love Harris's bass on this album and the second album. I like when his bass was so up front in the mix, mix and he did like all these little fills and things like that. Uh, Charlotte the Harl is great. Phantom of the Opera is such a terrific song. I was never a big fan of the title track. I don't know. It's like they still feel they got to play that every single show. And I'm just kind of like, uh, all right. But there's just some great stuff on here. The goofy right? chorus, isn't it? Eh? The yeah, chorus totally. Is. I'm here to get you. Do, 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 yeah, do, 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 I, I was do, never do, a big fan. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> everybody else seems to dig it. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Uh, yeah, the album yeah. cover is terrific, of course. And uh, the last. I lost one... track. I'm, I'm not sure. Do you got one more? I got one more. Yeah. So the last one on this on this uh, section here is Power and the Glory by Saxon. My favorite Saxon album. Uh, it's pretty much start to finish really good. You know, we may, I made a case for it on last week's show that there are a couple of songs on here that hint a little bit at Saxon trying to get in on this cold, like glam metal, hair metal thing, right? With your red line and uh, this town rocks, but the, the rest of it is so good. The Eagle has landed is so great. The title track is immense. Warriors just stampede and metal. Uh, Watching the Sky is terrific. I mean, it's just a great metal album and, you know, yeah, the, the cover is kind of cheesy, but I think it, it, the love the production of it. And for me, there's no question that this is the greatest Saxon album ever recorded. It's just absolutely amazing start to finish. And that's my uh, next six. All right. So my top six, uh, you know, I've got Ace of Spades at number six, and I almost feel like I want to switch it with Iron Fist. I don't know, man. I look at the track list and it's like, this really doesn't stand out to me so much. I think, I think this album just gets so much accolades because of the title track. And they're just all so close together, or at least, you know, Overkill is, is the one that's that's like, is it Overkill? Is it Ace of Spades? Then Bomber gets unfairly put in the rearview mirror and then Iron Fist. You know, yeah, it's it's a little it definitely it, people have mixed feelings about Iron Fist. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, um, I I don't feel like there's the, the massive standout tracks here. It might be the, the, the perfect version 
of the Motorhead production. That's for sure. I think I think they they picked it up a little bit. And and as you arrive at this album, it's as it's as good as that that strange Fast Eddie version is uh, is ever going to get. Well, it's it's uh, it's uh, yeah. I I I think uh, I think it's just got an incredible mix. It's really visceral. It's very exciting. But uh, but yeah. Um, so next, I've got uh, Number of the Beast. And it's funny, the way we both talked about Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden, I could almost talk about this album the same way. It sounds like the first album by a new band that's brimming with ideas, but it just feels like kind of rushed and weirdly put together. I mean, we got Bruce in the band, we got Adrian in the band. Um, you know, Adrian was there last time too. Uh, but um, but yeah, I, I look at the track listing and uh, there's a few things I was never particularly crazy about. Famously, this is Brian Slagle's favorite album of all time by anybody. Um, and yeah, Hallowed Be Thy Name is is an absolute classic, but I am not a Run to the Hills or Gangland fan. Uh, Number of the Beast, I'm even a little little down on. My favorites are, um, uh, and, and people say Invader. Yes, there's a lot to like kind of complain about here, it's a, but it's Maiden, right? I mean, it's still the bar is so high. But yeah, The Prisoner... And 22 Acacia Avenue are absolutely, and Hallowed are, are way, way up the list of my favorite, favorite Maiden songs. Um, so, uh, and uh, yes, uh, I do, I do prefer uh, Nico to, to Clive. Um, okay, so next we've got uh, Killers. So Killers is next. Um, and basically, uh, to me, this is uh, full of ideas better ideas, better songs, and better production at the same time. I mean, soon as Ides of March fades and you get that bass line coming for Wrathchild, what an absolute masterpiece That's of a metal kicker, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you just listen, you just listen to these guys song after song and Murders in the Room Org has so much personality, yet it's a little bit melodic, right? It's like immediately it was my favorite song on the album and I'm going, this isn't even the heaviest song on the album, but I just, I just love the way the whole thing's put together. Right. So everything. And then killers is being like fast and almost like a pre thrash sort of thing. Um, so yeah, this is just full of ideas and, uh, and yeah, it, it, it gave you, it, it, it gave you the confirmation right away that it was no fluke with these guys. These guys are really, really talented. They're probably the most talented band in terms of, we have a lot of great ideas uh, we're metal scholars, the, the the biggest metal scholars in the scene. And uh, you just knew they were sort of going places. So that's my number four. My number three is uh, High and Dry, Def Leppard. Um, absolute drop dead classic. Uh, again, it's Mutt Lang, uh, you know, giving a little bit of his image. Mutt Lang never... Never produced anything like this previously. Uh, ACDC doesn't sound like this. City Boy doesn't sound like this. Boomtown Rats doesn't sound like this. But this is this is almost like a demo version of Pyromania. Um, he's kind of he's kind of going in that direction. Uh, but the songs are just so undeniable. Um, you know, in in a way, in a way, they um, they are even better songwriters than Iron Maiden. Um, but it's it's obviously more. Um, you know, more conventional and more commercial, but everything on here is just so anthemic and well put together and just the kind of mel uh, melodies that a metalhead would, uh, would totally like. I, I remember even when I was playing a little bit of guitar, I went and learned most of this album on guitar years and years and years ago. I'm just looking at the tracks here and remembering how fun that was to play. So there you go. That's my number three and my number two I just love this album to death, Power and the Glory, Saxon. I just think it's got so much atmosphere. It's one of the most brutally, you know, hotly recorded albums of all time. And uh, in concert with the drummer, Nigel Glockler, joining the band. And you're right. I mean, uh, Warrior just is so heavy. Uh, but Watching the Sky. So that reminds me a little bit of Murders of the Rue Morgan, that it's got this perfect amount of melody thrown into it. Uh, but just the performances they put on this are so energetic that everything just translate, you know, Midas touch, you know, so that and Eagle has landed have kind of mellow bits to them. Right. It oh, doesn't Eagle matter. Patrick, it's just, it? yeah. it's just, yeah, it's just such a, it's a band on so much fire and there's just so much chemistry uh, in this, in this album. And uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. I, 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 I never really sort of looked at um, I can understand what you mean about red line and this town rocks where they're seeing something in the future, but it's just, this is so um, this is so obscurely and anti-commercially recorded that, that it's just, everything is just like baked in, in just this shower of sparks 
that uh, no matter what style they try on here, it's it's literally going to work because of the recording. Yeah. Um, so yeah, love this album to death. And uh, I don't have a physical of Iron Maiden peace of mind anymore, if you can believe it. Um, so that is my favorite. Uh, that is my top of all uh, all uh, four of these bands, all their four mashed catalogs. I, I just think, you know, where, uh, where Eagles Dare and you get that complicated drumming and this introduction to Nico. I think you get an incredible drum sound uh, on this album. Uh, it's one of the great Mar Martin Birch productions. Um, they kind of stick with this sound moving forward or bits of it throughout throughout till today um but uh, i don't think that it it almost reminds me a little bit of van halen van halen in that the most professional album these guys would ever make where they just just focused and locked down and got everything perfect was the very first one uh which is pretty bizarre uh but yeah just track after track of just just brilliance all over here great grooves like flight of icarus and die with your boots on just just the the rhythm section of nico and steve together is just so incredible and it's just brimming with ideas again but the cool thing about this album versus all three of the first ones is that all the songs crowd together and and make just a just a cohesive whole way better than the previous ones and i think that has to do with them really finding that absolutely perfect magical lineup for the band so that's my number one peace of mind yeah the sequencing uh is amazing on peace of mind yeah which yeah. i'll get to in a couple of minutes all right uh my number six is ace of spades okay. yeah what is it about this album martin that uh, most people automatically claim this is the best uh motorhead album of all time i i don't think it quite is that and I think that as time goes on, I maybe think it needs to be knocked down a couple pegs. I mean, you know, the title track, everybody loves the title track. Uh, Love Me Like a Reptile is so great. You know, Fire Fire is great. We, we Are the Road Crew is arguably my favorite Motorhead song. I mean, that's it's terrific. Um, but there's, there's, some, there's some stuff on here. It's a little bit of filler, right? But it's still great. It sounds yeah. great. It's a really good sounding album. And it's got one of the great cool album covers of all time i mean they look completely yeah. badass there so you have hey, to let me just throw in a point that i i meant to make about motorhead i i feel like i got motorhead lower down on this list and i'm thinking why is that and it's like i swear to god I, it's because it's because modern motorhead has ruined me for old motorhead i mean you i i could that. very sensibly before. yeah i could very sensibly give you my top top five motorhead albums and they could all be from the 2000s like it's yeah. pretty easy for me to do that and and i don't think it's completely unsensible so yeah in a weird way and that's that's from talking to lemmy all those times over the years where he would kind of eventually in over the course of a conversation make that point and it would stick right he'd say oh he was just kind of ropey right that was that was a standard thing i remember from him right and it's like yeah you're kind of right like you're just a way better band now um, so I know that's, uh, you know, that's a travesty to say that, but yeah, new motorhead has ruined me for, uh, for old motorhead. It happens. It happens. I mean, you can make that argument about Saxon too, right? Cause yeah. some of these recent Saxon albums are just barnstormers. And then you listen to the older stuff. It sounds kind of old, still great, but yeah, I totally get your point. Yeah. Um, my number five is going to be high and dry drop that classic i mean start to finish it doesn't get much better than this this to me it's not even a question that this is the greatest def leopard album ever made and a classic of this genre i mean let it go another hit and run the title track is great even bringing on the heartbreak is just great switch 625 on through the night i mean it's just and i love the production of this album this is just a terrific heavy rock album and the guitars are bristling joe sounds great it's awesome great great album really really good uh my number four is going to be the number of the beast i find that as the years go on i maybe it's because of overexposure um i don't hold this in as high regard as i used to and i think you hit the nail on the head i think there are there are a couple of absolute classics on here and then there's a couple other tracks that really maybe don't stand up as well compared to songs from other albums um, like I find like the title track, I, I don't really get into number of the beast as much anymore. The yeah. title track, it's, it's still a great song. Um, but like for me, 22 Acacia Avenue, hallowed be thy name, children of the damned, great songs. I think run to the hill still is a fun song, you know, gangland, the prisoner. I mean, they're good invaders. They're good. Uh, but I find more to love on the other two maiden albums that are to come, but uh, it's still great. Don't get me wrong. I still love it. I just don't, I don't, 
that used to be one of my favorite maiden albums. It's not quite there anymore. That's mm -hmm. my number four. My number three is uh, Overkill by Motorhead, which I absolutely adore. This is the first Motorhead album I ever bought. It's still my favorite. I like the fact that there's all sorts of different uh, tempos and feels on this album. Like you mentioned, there's the, the moodier, slower stuff on here, which I love Metropolis. I love Capricorn. I like when they did. They really never did stuff like that ever again. Title track is amazing. Stay clean. I'll be your sister. I mean, it's just so fun. Tear you down. When it kicks your ass, it kicks your ass. When it's moodier, it's just so different and so good. Uh, Lynn from Lynn is another great one. And that's one of the great album covers of all time bar any style or band whatever so that's my number three uh my number two i gotta say i've had my favorite iron maiden album for god 35 plus years and uh it's still gonna be my favorite but i think my number two is quickly catching it and i almost don't want it to catch it because my number two is killers and i want to be loyal to bruce and still always have a Bruce album as number one. But man, this is great. I thought it was great back then. I probably think it's even better now. You hit on a lot of points I was going to make. There are just some songs on here that are so memorable and so ahead of their time. I love Harris's, again, just like with the debut, I love his bass playing on this album when he's leading songs in. And they never really did that anymore. Other than now, they he does these, that goes on forever, right? But here, you know, right before like innocent exile and wrath child is just uh, murders in the room are so memorable even the kind of like the moodier stuff on here is just great drifter's so good uh purgatory the title track is amazing there's blistering twin leads all over the place deano sounds awesome on here great songwriting great playing great cover only to be eclipsed right now also at number one is peace of mind hard to argue this uh i i think to get back to what you were saying about the track sequencing, it's like it hits you with this drum barrage, where Eagles Dare, what, one of the best opening statements for a new drummer in a band, I think, ever. And I love the song. And then it ends with To Tame a Land, which is really, I mean, they did many epics before this, but I think this is the beginning of them experimenting more with these longer form tracks and then everything in between, you know, Trooper, Still Life is Great, Flight of Icarus, Revelations, you know. Everybody makes fun of Quest for Fire, but I even I still like that as well. Maybe it's the worst song in the album, whatever, but it's still kind of fun. I love the production. I agree with you. I think this is one of, if not the best Martin Birch production on a Maiden album, if not of all the albums he ever did. And it's got a great cover. I saw him on this tour. They were amazing. And that's my number one. So we're pretty top heavy with Maiden. I think our, our lists are actually very, very similar. Yeah, yeah, very absolutely. Similar. Yeah. Like, where do we really deviate the most here? Because... Uh, uh, you had the Saxon a little lower. I had the Motorheads yeah. lower than you, I think, a little bit. Um, yeah, but yeah, but I had Killers at four. You added a two. Um, yeah, I had oh, I had Overkill all the way down to eleven. You added at three. Yeah. Number of the Beast. Yeah, we were both kind of uh, complaining about Number of the Beast, but had it high anyways. But uh, it's not, and I, I, it's like it's it's weird. It's not like a bad complaining. It's just I just think that maybe I just don't hold it in as high regard as I used to. Uh, but yeah. it's still, I, I still accept that it's great, and I fully believe that. I just, um, for whatever reason, I just find that I'm. That's one of the maybe because I just heard it way too many times over the years, and I just don't reach for it as much, and I'm just kind of tired of some of the songs. I still fully embrace its greatness, but I just think that uh, I don't know. Killers for me, even though I've heard that as much, if not more, over the years as Number of the Beast, Killers just keeps rising for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. I, it. it I, could it rise any higher? We'll see. I don't, know. I don't know. Yeah, just great atmosphere and magic. And it seems like a yeah. band with a purpose, like so excited yeah. about like, we want to present these songs to you because we know they're great. Right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So there you have it, everybody. Uh, feel free to take this Herculean task down in the comments below. Rank all these 18 albums as you like them. Or if you want to do your top five or top 10, do that as well. And uh, we're going to come back and do something once again for you next week, right? So, uh, Martin, you want to give everybody a little hint of what's to come? Yeah, I, I think I'm remembering this correctly from memory because I've already made my notes on it. Um, but uh, we're going to go through all the all the years of the new wave of British heavy metal. We're going to stop at 83, right? Or do yep. we go to 84? Uh, yeah, 83. 83. We'll, we'll stop at 83. We're each going to pick our three 
top favorites each and present three, them two. in reverse order three two one um so three each favorites from each year in the in the new wave of british heavy metal so yeah so for those of you who want to hear us talk more about angel witch and tigers of pantang and diamond head and all that kind of stuff you will have the opportunity to hear about these albums and more coming up next week so yeah absolutely Very so cool. martin uh what's going on with the contrarians and the podcast and the books got any big updates for us here this holiday? well let's see we did the album cover show with the canary uh canaries uh canaries? Contrarians. <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah it's our new youtube channel the canaries um and uh so books wise uh there's been nothing particularly new right now but uh kiss at 50 van halen at 50 uh led zeppelin visual queen live so that's all at martinpopoff.com i knocked off my next uh history and five songs with martin pop-off episode it's called uh genesis and the worst year in history so it's about how genesis had a shelved uh double concept album about the year 536 a.d so i, ex I explain why they call that scientists call that the worst year in history and i go through all the genesis lyrics saying see 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 here it is here it is here they're talking about the volcano and the snow and all that stuff uh so that's uh that's the next podcast episode so uh and then we've got our acdc podcast we had the sixth episode of that go up recently that i do with john gaffney called kicked in the teeth and acdc podcast Lots going on. Uh, lots going on here as well. We got uh, Ken Golden, the professor's picks coming up in just uh, a few short album hours. You were normally, I can say later on today, but since we're coming at you in the afternoon on Friday in just a little bit, so stay tuned for that. Uh, Jamie Laszlo and the review crew happening tomorrow. Jamie's got a new crew talking about some more new releases. And then Sunday, Grant Arthur will be on with me for ranking the albums. We're going to rank the Dennis DeYoung solo records. And then of course, Monday is Hudson Valley Squares once again. So thanks for watching, everybody. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. For Martin Popo, if I am Pete Pardo, thanks for watching. See you next Friday at the Fun House for more new wave of British heavy metal mayhem. Till then, have a good one. Bye-bye.